Hello and welcome to another episode of Al's Garage and today we are going to be diving into this 1943 Willys MB project. The first and most important thing I want to do is get this running and the biggest hiccup in getting that happening is the need for a replacement ring gear. So uh, obviously it's having trouble starting. We're going to go in, we're going to replace the ring gear, and that's going to involve pulling the transmission and transfer case. Uh, if everything on here was original Willys MB components, I would be able to get in there and uh, order parts pretty simple. But uh, since this was owned uh, by the same owner and still is since 1956, uh, he told me that he replaced the original uh, L134 flathead four cylinder with another 134 inch uh, Willys Jeep engine from a DJ3A, uh, which is a two wheel drive Jeep from the early 60s. He did that sometime in the late 60s or early 70s, uh, obviously because the original engine was um, in need of replacement or uh, worn out or something. So uh, with that, the number of teeth on the ring here is different than the uh, World War II counterpart of that engine. So I just need to pull this apart, figure out how many teeth I'm working with, then uh, I'll know what to order. Uh, and while we're in there, we'll take a look at the clutch and uh, review everything to make sure that uh, if we need to replace anything else, that, that we can do that. So uh, we're gonna do that uh, right now um, as kind of a lead up to this job. Uh, a few things that I did to this Jeep since our uh, original video where I brought this home, um, I threw the wheels and tires from my Jeep onto this just because they're narrower uh, and they don't go flat. So uh, it'll make it easier to uh, roll the thing in and out of the garage or wherever I need to. Um, so you can see, uh, obviously I took all the original tires uh, from my Jeep off, put, put them onto this. Then uh, I went into the interior and I took some time and I pulled everything out from the area where I know I'll need to be working where the transmission transfer case uh, area is. So I got that all cleaned out and ready to go. So uh, at this point, there's a few tricks that we'll be reviewing on how to do a ring gear replacement. And it will be fun and exciting. It might take a few days. So I hope you're ready. Here we go. So we are here underneath the vehicle looking at the back of the transfer case. Also you see the emergency brake which on these Willys MBs clamps on the drive shaft. Kind of a very old timey sort of setup with these emergency brakes. But uh, all of this needs to come out starting with the drive shafts, uh, the exhaust pipe, this cross member is the piece that really, uh, as you can see here, uh, that needs to come out first. Um, I don't have a transmission jack, I have a floor jack, but I think I can apply that to this job and get this out, so let's get it started.
at this point we have most of what we need done done. In addition, we removed the uh, coolant, or at least most of it, uh, as we have dropped the engine down. Uh, I loosened the mounts for the engine on the side, and I was able to get the upper radiator hose loose so that as I drop the engine down, it will give that room to move. So we are just about ready. At this point we have the bolts that attach the engine and transmission uh, transfer case assembly together. So I'm gonna start that. Uh, as far as the jacks go, I didn't really do a good sh job showing it, but let me see if I can uh, paint you a picture of what I did. So as the cross member was getting disassembled, I took a bottle jack and I put it right behind or right in front of the uh, emergency brake which is this unit right here um, and there's a, there was a unit where uh, it went up and kind of had a flat spot where I knew that if I put the bottle jack it wouldn't slide off so I used that to hold the engine while I took the cross member off uh, from there I uh, took everything else off and then I put the uh, jack that you see here, this floor jack under the oil pan. Now I moved the floor jack to the rear engine mount, so that is holding that right now, and I am about to get some blocks and wood, and I will put that where the uh, oil pan is right now, so that will hold it, and then in the meantime I will be taking a uh, strap and I'm going to uh, wrap it around the floor jack here so that this transmission transfer case assembly doesn't uh, move too much as I go to pull it out. So that is what we got in front of us. Uh, not a whole lot left and uh, as you can see it's, it's dropped pretty far down now and we are about to get this thing apart. So here we are in the belly of the beast looking at the clutch and clutch plate and flywheel and ring gear. So I will be replacing these, uh, but I first have to take them off. And uh, what I did here is I took my Sharpie and I made a mark right here. I know it's not a huge deal. Uh, I'll probably keep the clutch unit uh, and I might keep the clutch plate because there wasn't anything wrong with it, just the ring gear. But it's nice to be able to put everything back exactly how I found it. I'm kind of a stickler for engine balance, so I like to make sure that everything just goes back together. It's, a, it's kind of a, a thing of mine. So uh, anyway, I will be 
taking this off. And the engine turns. I forgot about that. Um, I will be right back. I have been out here for about 30 minutes prying and pounding on this thing to try to get it to come off and also being delicate because I don't want to crack my block by prying on something so uh, I finally have some looseness here and I think I can get it off now the nut that I have on here is holding the flywheel keeping it from just dropping off. So that's one thing that's important to do, obviously with any flywheel exchange uh, replacement here is to keep one nut on because this thing's heavy and will come off. So I'm gonna turn this around. And with doing that, I'm gonna hit this. I've been using a um, breaker bar as my pry bar just because it's a little bit thicker. Uh, I can get in here and without bending this, cracking this, or cracking my block, I can get in here and kind of, you know, move this like this. Um, so we are up oh, and there it is. So I'm going to do this. So this actually, so that is at the top. Um, and then I'm going to pull this off and away we go. Perfect. I think what happened is grease was put in here, which is great. It helps the um, end of the transmission that sticks down in here. Uh, it helps that uh, gre you know go along here, but this grease ended up getting hard and becoming a um, almost like glue. So uh, anyway, I am able to see our ring gear, which definitely needs replacement. Uh, we will be looking at that in a minute once I get all of this stuff out of here. So here you can see the damage caused to the flywheel from the starter Bendix gear. Now, this can happen if the vehicle is running and you go to try to start it, it will shoot that Bendix gear forward and you'll usually hear a, you know, type of a sound. Uh, modern cars, I don't know, 2010 and newer have a failsafe built in in their computer system that won't allow it to do that, which is great. What we found out here at a later time is that these gears were 
gnarled up because the starter was a nine tooth starter which is for the later types the DJ3A and the CJ3A and the ring gear was a 97 tooth which is for the MB what it should have been is 124 tooth so uh, if, as you're building these 134 cubic inch engines for these Jeeps just make sure you have that done correctly that the correct ring gear and the correct starter are right for each other um, kinda interesting thing as well uh, you can see that there's only certain areas that are really chewed up and that's because when the engine stops it rotates and stops at a certain point really um, uh, you know at at uh, a certain point and then 180 degrees off of that so what some you know really budget individuals might do is pull the ring gear off and then rotate it 90 degrees and that'll essentially allow it to go on those uh, teeth so uh, the, the ones that aren't chewed up. So that can be a thing to do, but uh, let's get the ring gear off the flywheel at this time. One thing that's extremely important is to make sure that this ring gear goes on the right way. It's not like some cars where you can flip it. You actually need to put it on with that tapered edge, as you can see, going towards the starter Bendix. With the ring gear out, we're going to replace and install a new pilot shaft bushing. So this is a pretty important thing to replace because that inside diameter can get a little bit wider uh, over time with use and can cause wear on the transmission. So let's get in front of that. While this is all uh, apart, we're going to hammer out an old one and put a new one in. Uh, obviously we don't want to hit the edge there and want to make sure that uh, once it goes in uh, that it you know slides nice and easy uh, with our clutch alignment tool. So let's do it. A couple more hits and we'll get it done. It seems to be moving really good. There it is, it's out. Nice and easy. I used an old kingpin from uh, another vehicle project as my uh, drift to get it out, and there you can see the old one uh, was pounded in. I'm going to use that same kingpin to uh, gently pound the new one back in and that should uh, wrap things up for that job. And there you have it, the ring gear is on the flywheel. Right now it spins freely, but in a moment once the temperature of the ring gear drops and the temperature of the flywheel rises, they will meet each other 
and it will uh, essentially clamp down. But before then, you just want to make sure that it is seated in there as good as possible. And that's kind of why I spun it, is just to make sure that it is, uh, you know, nice and tight in there. You can already see the frosty flywheel melting, uh, that temperature uh, rising on that. So uh, we'll wait and let this cool down, and in about 10 minutes, we'll come back to it and see where we're at. All right, at this point, the ring gear has pretty much seated itself onto the flywheel. You can see that the temperature on the flywheel has risen to the point where all of that frost has condensed and is now kind of a, a little moisture on top of the uh, metal unit here. So we'll just wipe that off and uh, you can also see the uh, flywheel is nice and seated in there. You can raise it up. Uh, it looks great. So let's start working on some of our other parts and getting this thing put back together. Let's get the transmission and transfer case degreased here and I usually take those outside when I do a job like this and start with like a spray engine degreaser. That usually gets a lot of the initial grease and gunk and stuff loose. Then I use a wire brush, get in there and get some of the other areas clean. Uh, again, this isn't I guess required, but it's always nice to be able to put this back together a little bit cleaner than uh, it went apart. So after spraying the items with water, I came back in here with some lacquer thinner and got it cleaned up. So to get started with this throw out bearing and throw out bearing retainer spring replacement, uh, let's start by trying to get this spring off. I'm going to use a pair of needle nose pliers to get in here. Let's see here. There we go. And this just slides out. Obviously I make a note that here's where the spring went. Uh, and then I will set this here. Uh, this allows our fork, our clutch fork, to come out as well. Um, and I see that this slides down and out. Um, so I will take a moment and be back right with you. I'm going to clean all of this and uh, then we'll get ready to uh, start putting this together. Uh, let me actually take a moment and get this out as well before we clean everything up inside. There. So with the throttle bearing, or the clutch release bearing, as it's sometimes called, you just drive the old one off of the carrier and then pound a new one on. Now I don't have a press, which would have made this a lot easier. Uh, I have a couple of bricks though, so I was able to use that uh, and drive the carrier through the hole there to get the uh, old one off. I didn't get that filmed, but you can see me hammering the new one on. Uh, you know, if you have like a soft edged hammer rather than a uh, metal one like I used, that might be a little bit better. Next up is the clutch release fork, and you can see I have grease on all of our movement points, which is super important. So especially there, you want to make sure that that, uh, you know, ball receptacle and uh, where that pivots is nice and greased. So uh, let's go ahead and install it. And you can see you get the cable on the outside end of the fork. And then we'll slide the center pivot of the fork onto that uh, ball, uh, which will set us up to get our throw out bearing and carrier installed on the retainer. Before you put the throw out bearing and carrier back on the retainer shaft, you want to make sure to put that return spring in the uh, center part here. There's two ways to do it. You could install it after the throw out bearing is inside. You could have it hook up to the carrier and then the bell housing or vice versa. I like to hook it up this way because uh, it's kind of hard to get back in there once this is installed. So, and another thing that's important is to make sure that that shaft has grease on it as the throw out bearing and carrier will be sliding up and down every time you push that clutch in. So with the throw out bearing and carrier in, next step is to install our return spring, which is actually very simple at this point with our needle nose pliers. 
An important step when you do a starter rebuild and a ring gear replacement like we're doing is to replace the bushing that the starter shaft rides against in the bell housing. You can see me removing this with an appropriately sized socket that I don't plan on using as a socket anymore. It's, uh, it's pretty much adrift at this point. Uh, so that actually came out pretty easy once we get it started. Uh, and then I usually pound a new one in. My trick is that I pound the bushing in from the back so that that front edge, that front lip, doesn't get gnarled up or bent. Uh, it is brass and so uh, it, you know, it can get bent up and uh, uh, scored pretty easy. And I did it to where it was flush with that level of the bell housing, so we should be set as far as how far in that should go. But at this point, our clutch is moving back and forth successfully and is ready to go. One final thing before you put everything back together is to take some white paint and mark where your timing marks are. It makes it a whole lot easier once you get this in to see where your timing marks are so that you can properly time this. I painted these with a brush and then while the paint was still wet, I used a little lacquer thinner to wipe off the excess stuff, which allowed the paint and the recessed areas to stay where it was, uh, giving us this effect. As we get ready to install our flywheel, let's make sure that there's some grease in the back of our crankshaft where the front of our main shaft of our transmission sits and spins. Let's also make sure that the surfaces that we are going to be mating our plate that goes in between the block and the bell housing is nice and clean. Always nice to clean that stuff when you take it out so that when you put it back together it's not going to get dirt or grease or anything else uh, in some of these areas like where the clutch operates. Uh, let's at this time get the flywheel put in. Uh, you can remember that I had marked the bolt which is at the top left corner. Uh, I haven't moved the engine in any way so I know that that's in the same spot and from here I just take a nut doesn't need to even have uh, any washers on it but just one nut that'll sit there and keep that thing on there from there we will tighten our bolts in a cross hatch pattern the torque rating on these is roughly 40 pounds and at this point let's install the clutch plate the area that has I would say more metal uh, in the very center right here is going towards the back. I remember it like big part going towards the back, big back, kind of a weird thing but whatever you can use to uh, ensure that you remember uh, even if you write a, in a sharpie uh, which side is the back, which side is the front that's a way to do it as well. Always a good thing to you know make sure you don't get that clutch in backwards because it won't work if you do. And from there you can take the clutch plate, orient it on the pressure plate, and then move that whole assembly onto the flywheel to uh, try and get it started. Just like with our flywheel, we want to take one or two bolts or nuts and finger tighten them on to allow the component to be held in place. And then we can go around and hand tighten and install the other bolts on the clutch pressure plate. After the bolts are all finger tightened, we want to make sure to position the clutch plate uh, first by hand and then with our clutch alignment tool. We want to make sure that that clutch is in the right position uh, because the transmission will have such a hard time going in there if the clutch isn't aligned with the hole on the end of the crankshaft. Uh, and the pressure plates, if that's not all in alignment, uh, it's going to make it really hard to get that to slide in together. So we'll make sure that, you know, it's in there nice and free, slides in there back and forth, and then we will go through the process of tightening each of the bolts down within our pressure plate. The torque rating on each of those bolts is roughly 17 foot-pounds. And as we tighten those, just like with the flywheel, we tighten those in a cross hatch pattern. 
After that clutch pulley is fully tightened down, you want to make sure that the clutch alignment tool can slide in and out with ease. You don't want there to be any resistance because if there's resistance with this alignment tool, there will be resistance and it'll be super hard to get your transmission in. So after messing around with the floor jack, I realized it does make a difference using the right tools. I've used the floor jack to put this engine or this transmission combo in a vehicle like this prior, but it's it's a pain in the butt. Having a transmission jack makes it a lot easier. Uh, you can use these knobs to adjust it side to side up and down, so we're just going to use the right tools and get this transmission put in the vehicle. Well, I'm excited because the end is near with this ring gear project. The engine and transmission transfer case are officially made it together. This took me probably three to four hours. Uh, it's like 105 here in Phoenix this time of year. So it was kind of tough working today. I had to go in for some breaks, but I was able to get the shaft on the front of the transmission through that clutch and into the pilot bearing. So we are set. Uh, there were eight bolts. I didn't take a video of that because frankly I just wanted to get through it. But there are eight bolts. Uh, one at the very top on the passenger side and then as you work down uh, a couple near the starter, one on that uh, part where it connects to the block, uh, and then down below, and then again on the driver's side, there's the uh, one up on the top, uh, and then one as you work down, one that connects to the block uh, where that little ear comes out, uh, and then another one on the bottom. So we have all of those tightened up now. Let's get to it. So let's clean the movement points that ball 
and then on the other end uh, clean that area of our pedal shaft assembly uh, so that when we install it, it's all nice and clean. I usually grease it just, you know, one less step uh, once we get everything together. Next up is the shifter levers where they have a couple little clips. Those can be kind of a pain in the butt to install, but uh, after you do it a few times, you get the hang of it. you got to make sure that the transmission and engine, of course, is lifted up high enough so that that um, pivoting pin is able to slide in there. This Jeep has a enlarged hole in the transmission hump, which made that easier. I can obviously understand why they would do that. So uh, next up, take that sh clutch pedal shaft assembly and install it into the frame as we we're getting pretty close from an engine and transmission standpoint of being where it's supposed to be in its home location. So there's a pin which goes through the clutch linkage fork into that shaft assembly, which can be kind of a pain to install if it's not fully in the right spot. But, uh, you know, after you work with it enough, you can get it. Next is installing that bottle jack, just like we did when we pulled this thing out. And we want to install that so that we can lower down the transmission jack, remove that and get that out of there so that we can have room to install the cross member that goes underneath the transfer case and mounts the transmission and transfer case to the body. When I mount this cross member in, I usually start with one side, get those bolts loose but certainly installed so that it essentially will pivot and then I try to install the same bolts on the other side which would finish the installation. It can be a little bit tricky as the transmission and transfer case are somewhat loose and might have difficulty finding their home. So what I do is I use a jack and I get under there and lift it up and lower it and move it around so that it makes it easier for those bolts to go through the bolt holes of the cross member and that bracket in the frame. With the cross member in but not tightened, I then install the rear engine mounts, which are both on the transfer case. Then once I know that those are threading in and uh, are going to be seated properly, then I go around and tighten everything down, which completes that job. From here, it's just a matter of installing the drive shaft on the rear and the drive shaft on the front and then tightening down those front engine mounts that go on the front of each side of the engine block. With those tightened, that essentially installs our engine back into the vehicle. Well, that's a wrap for this ring gear replacement job, and what a job it has been. A few things I didn't film. I didn't get the front drive shaft filmed. I was just working through some of the stuff and didn't get a camera under there. Also, the plate, the inspection cover, which is on the bell housing, I put that on, which actually was a huge job because it's so close to the floor so when you're putting this back together real important make sure that you get the inspection cover on before you get it fully in there um, thanks for watching this hopefully this was helpful if you are doing this job uh, i have a lot more stuff coming to do on this 1943 willys mb so hopefully you can stay tuned and like and subscribe to the channel and see more content all right, thanks a lot.